In our last factory tour, we checked out Fluxo's beautiful save with some really gorgeous shots, with some features absolutely blowing my mind. But unfortunately, this save is not available to download yet. But don't worry, because today we're going to be checking out another one of Fluxo saves, which is currently available to download, which has some incredible points to check out too. So let's check it out. And of course, if you do want to check out this save, I will put it on satisfactorytips.com so that you can download it yourself. And remember, if you do enjoy this save, make sure to check out the content creator Fluxo on YouTube. They have their own channel where they show off all of their amazing builds. This is quite a big save, so we can't cover all of it in this video. I'll probably gloss over various bits, but definitely check it out. I'm also not sure where to start because there is so much to show off, so let's head over to where all the ores come in to be processed. The way in which Fluxo works the logistics for this is he collects all of the ores along buses and then takes them up to train stations where they take the resources. This is definitely the technique that I use for my logistics as well. I'd rather bring all of the resources in a local area to one station where it will take it along to a factory further down the line. There's also something very nice about having the resources on the lower levels and then being brought up scaffolding along to the train stations that are above everything. All of the train stations then lead their trains to a single central station where all the resources are gathered and taken down below the factory before being merged and then taken across to a single train station, which will take all of the resources to the main factory. Or at least that's what I anticipate because this map isn't 100% finished as far as I can tell. But it is clear that this bridge was meant to transport vehicles and trains alike in order to get resources to the main factory. Though some vehicles might get confused. Let me know in the comments if you can spot the reason why. This bridge is really cool. Um, I definitely feel that Fluxo has this, I, I, looking at it, an architectural style which is very geometric and quite sci-fi, quite futuristic. But the best part about this section of the build isn't this bridge, but in fact it's the dam behind it. I absolutely love what they've done here. This looks like the dam has lifted up the doors ever so slightly and it's at such an angle that it does look like it's just letting in all of the water out of the dam. There's also a control tower looking over this and I think it's right that Fluxo made these um, this dam very much heavy in, on the foundation front. It's very bulky and I think it needs that for the sheer size of the waterfalls. And there's also a lower dam floor which gives you a perfect viewpoint of the dam in action. Huh. And of course, no dam would be complete without generators in order to produce all the power from the water or the coal? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I mentioned in the last episode that Fluxo makes use of a lot of foundations. Not all of these buildings are for factories. Some of them are just for decoration sake. And that's okay. It really adds to the, the character of the build. That being said, if you did want factories, well, there's plenty of that going on as well. Here we have a load of packages packing up water with the water extractors below, which then head up and across to the drone ports, where the drones take the water across over to the ingot facility opposite for pure alts. To be fair, I'm not sure why the water wasn't just extracted in the factory underneath, but this does look cool, so, you know, why not? This factory has several floors, each dedicated to their own resource, and in the center, a double helix, which seems to be a theme because you can see them scattered about the save. There are then other factories which are dedicated to producing the resources, or going to be because this one's a hollow shell, and you'll also find extensive refinery setups throughout this area, taking the crude oil from the Golden Coast and then being produced into fuel. But there isn't a particularly huge fuel plant here. In fact, most of the, the energy is generated via coal, which we'll talk about in a moment. I really like how Fluxo tried to incorporate highways and stylizing signs for the use of vehicles in this save. I'd love to see more of the vehicles being used. However, I also want to say that this save is pre 
the previous one that you saw, because the styles are just so different. And there's another save that I'll be showing off next week, which I think has some incredible shots that you have to see in it. Uh, this particular building is the hub and also the space elevator, obviously. Along with some cool looking trophy rooms, you'll also find that there's a hypertube area, which takes you to the various areas in the save. And there's also a pretty cool equipment floor situated below, allowing us to grab anything that you need really quickly if you die. If we follow the highway opposite the hub, we'll find ourselves outside the Golden Coast Dam. The Gold Coast Dam is actually really important in this save and that's because it's transporting all of the coal down from the rest of the world to the major power plant. And there's a lot of coal coming down through here. And it almost looks like it's a waterfall of resources, which I think works really well alongside the waterfall to the left. And if there's one thing that I would recommend taking from Fluxo's build style here, is the way that Fluxo brings all of the resources to one central bus line. We saw this earlier in the factory with the um, packaged water, but here you can see how Fluxo brings all of the coal from various stops intermittently placed along, along one long bus line all the way to the factory and it's a very clean and simple approach for people who are looking to transport resources long distance via conveyor bus. Now before we finish off at the power plant I do actually want to jump over to the battery plant which is just across from here. Located in the large lake or above the large lake in the northern forest we have the battery plant. For these batteries Fluxo uses the alternate recipe for the blender which uses sulfuric acid, alumina solution and aluminium frames goodness me i'm struggling today the silica from the quartz is transported from that factory that we just saw across to the refinery section and in here it is used for the aluminium solution one thing that i always really like to see is that the walkways are lifted above the floor when it comes to the refineries i just i love looking down on the refinery inputs and that's exactly what we have in this section of the say with the sulfuric acid. I also really like how despite using glass foundations, you don't realize that there's actually a whole production floor beneath which is producing those aluminium ingots uh, with the silica, which is then going on to become the aluminium frames. Sorry, aluminium casing. Aluminium casing. <laughs> With all the resources then ending up in these blenders to become batteries which are taken across this central line to these drone ports where they're then taken via drone all the way back to the main factory to feed those drones. And with that out of the way we can look at the coal plants. Heading across the Golden Coast Dam we then have this whole factory dedicated to coal power. And what's nice about it is that it's separated into three tiers, making it really simple to understand. On the bottom row, we have a huge water extractor plant, which brings up all the water required for these coal generators. There's also something really trance-like about seeing all of these pipes undulating. These are then all taken up to the next floor, which is specifically designed for logistics. And this coincidentally is where all of the coal is brought into as well. All 6,720 of it, which equates to just under 450 coal generators. Along here we have walkways to go along as well as all of the coal running underneath the water which is now being run across the top and into fluid buffers. Along the central shaft you'll see all of the resources being taken up both with the water and the coal and I love the light blue light usage that we also saw in the previous nuclear build. It seems very clean, very scientific, very, very clinical. And on the opposing side, you will also find a huge bank of batteries, just in case you have a power outage. And then above this floor, we have the huge wave or mass of coal generators, which are being fueled by those resources, pretty much covering all of the power needed in this save. And what I love about looking at this is, as I mentioned earlier, you can see a huge change in the uh, thought process for Fluxo when building, going from very much factory focused, uh, almost mega builds versus the last episode's factory tour, which was much more um, focused on all of the intricate detail of the save. 
And that's not to say take anything away from this. This is a fantastic build. But I absolutely love seeing the process of someone who's building factories and how they change. I saw the same with my approach. But we are going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did like it, please do hit the thumbs up. And don't forget, you can check this save out over on satisfactorytips.com. Special thanks goes to our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, Cerebral Tag, James Irwin, Firefless, and Jerry2, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Dixie Chris, and Ben, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Chick Norris. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.